Welcome to a special extended episode of Dental Discussions. We are featuring a presentation by Tim Tudak, Director of North America for HDX Will Radiology. Enjoy your presentation. We talk about CBCT. Uh, CBCT is a technology that allows us to basically have three-dimensional Im imaging in a low-dose radiation environment in a dental office. Uh, this has become something from a want to have to a need to have in dentistry, even over the last six years. Uh, not only because of the fact that the prices have gone to something that's much more accessible to the regular dentist, but it's also that if you're doing any sort of procedural dentistry, that uh, it's becoming more and more important to understand the three-dimensional uh, structure of the bone and or the tooth that you're working with. So in looking at that, when we look at that, people look for CBCT and they look, and when, when they're looking to purchase a CBCT, usually they have something in mind. So somebody says, well, I want to have a CBCT because I'm going to do endodontics. Then they're looking at a specific CBCT just for that, or they're doing a CBCT for implants. Um, and then of course we have the general dentist that may be doing a number of different things, maybe doing a little bit of endo, a little bit of implants as well. What I find though, is that people don't realize the myriad of things that a CBCT can do for your practice and being able to optimize your practice in a number of different ways. What we find in a lot of our practices is, is that once they realize what the CBCT can do, it becomes an evolution in their practice, where at first they may only use the CBCT for what they thought they were going to use it for, but now they realize that maybe I can use it to do this, or maybe I wanna be able to start doing airway treatment. And because I have a CBCT that has a large enough field of view that I can look at the airway and be able to see those along the way. So I wanted to be able to go quickly through some of the things uh, that CBCT can do other than what you normally think. And so I wanted to go quickly through that. So looking at the screen here, looking at a CBCT. So again, going through the easy ones that I'll enlarge this screen so we can look at things like endodontics. So we can look at things like if I was looking at this patient and wanted to do an endodontic analysis that I could actually go through and I'll blow this up a little bit. I'm in the maxilla and I can actually go through and with our CBCT from HDX Will, we can actually see things like dental caries. So we can see a break in the crown. We can also see how far it's cavitated inside the tooth itself. And we can actually go through with the whole dentition doing an examination to be able to see that there's other interproximal cavities along the way. Doing an endodontic analysis, we could be able to go to this tooth, go through the axial view, keep scrolling down, and we could be able to see as it breaks up into a buc buccal and lingual roots, that in this case, we could actually see that uh, we have an MB2 canal right here. So again, as an endodontist, you need to have that information so that you can understand what you're going to attack before you attack it, so you make sure you get all those canals. And then we could go through and go 360 degrees around that tooth to be able to look at that tooth and oh, well we found out in this case that this root had a curvature to it. We could go through, we could make a measurement on that tooth to know where that curvature happens. So that when we're going through and doing the endodontic procedure, we know where to change to a flexible file to make that happen. Looking at our lingual root and coming over here and verifying that we have an MB2 and a distal buckle, a distal buckle root as well. So now moving into other things that we can do as we go down, that I'll take down the magnification a little bit, that now we can see things in a larger field of view where we look at things like the airway. So we can see here that we can see the whole airway from the nasopharynx down. And in this case, we have a tool where we can actually go through and create an endoscopy. And in that endoscopy, we can actually go through and be able to look down the airway. I'll turn it into soft tissue and then I can make it to where I can actually fly down the airway and actually look down the airway. So I can see a tonsil here and a tonsil here. Turn the corner, there's the soft palate, the back of the tongue, and we can actually fly past the epiglottis and into the airway itself. Speaking of doing, <clears throat> speaking of doing things like um, endoscopies, I can even do an endoscopy inside a tooth. So in this case, I could come over here and I'll just look at the whole left side of this dentition and as long as we have an open space within a hard space that I can go through, and in this particular case, I'm going to look at buccolingually on the left side of this dentition, and I find this tooth with this central cavity right here. And I'm going to blow this up so we can see it a little bit better. Bring it over to the middle of the screen. And so I see that tooth right there with that central cavity. 
that I could use that same tool. And because of the clarity of the images, that we can be able to go through, map out points inside that tooth. And now for the first time, when you're doing endodontics, we can go through and be able to see inside that tooth. So we can actually look at the roots before we even start the procedure. And we can see that these are my two buccal roots. There's my lingual root. I can look around the pulp canal and I can actually fly down the route that I mapped down, see all the way to the apex to make sure there's no other bifurcations or calcifications in my way. So now that enhances your ability to do endodontics so that you know what's happening with your patient before you actually do the procedure itself. Coming back over here, again, you can do things like TMJ analysis. So again, we can come over here and look at the TMJs and be able to see that we can look at these TMJs in slices. We can also use, again, that same tool to do an endoscopy of the TMJ itself. So we can fly through and now actually see the TMJ as it lays inside the, the, the joint itself. Look at the shape of the TMJ and see how it, how, it, how it sits. As we move back, we can also go from inside the face for the first time and view it, the face of that TMJ condyle. So in this case, see a nice robust round condyle and this looks relatively flat. I can come from near the pterygoids on in. And now looking at that same, that I can go through and I can fly through the soft tissue because I can ignore it just looking at bone. And now we can see that this condyle that looked fairly normal from the lateral side now has this bony spur here, this bony spur here, and a flattening that would be early TMJ collapse that we would have never seen from the lateral side. Now going into things again, things that people usually will use, uh, ask for CBCT4, is looking at things like implant planning. So again, with implant planning here, that one of the wonderful things about CBCT is that we can do things like reposition our patient. So that now we get our patient in a standard position every time. One of the things we do when we do that is allow us to be able to have something that we can make a recognizable picture every time we do that. So now when we start to plan, we can understand it better. So in this case, we can go through. And again, one of the benefits of having a CBCT out in this direction here and out this wide is we can be able to identify if there's any auxiliary nerve innervations because uh, those are patients that we would do a block in this area here, but they would still have sensation if they had an auxiliary nerve canal in this area. But now because we have a CBCT out this wide, we can be able to see it. This patient doesn't have that, so I can just take and map down that nerve. Just following down that canal. Look, find the foramen there. Double click, and now the nerve is mapped. So now I'm just gonna make this a picture that I understand a little bit better. And now we have our nerve mapped and are ready for implantation. So if I wanted to choose to do an implant right there on that tooth, I could do so. When you have a curved image and you flatten it out, you get what's called parallax, this tilting of the teeth. So I'm just gonna move my image to where I get a true cross section of that image. And that would be this image here. And I'm gonna blow that up. Now with that image, I'll bring this up and you can see the nerve that I mapped and the nerve canal. I can now measure that bone to come from the top of the nerve to the top of the crest and inside cortical to inside cortical so that now I know those dimensions so I know what size implant I can put in. Now I can come over here and be able to say, well, I want to put in an implant, pick in place. I can choose whatever I want to use. So I can come over here and say, I want to use an implant and I'm going to use a, because we have 11 millimeters here, I'll use a five by eight. Put it in here, I'll click on the bone we're going to go in the mandible at number 30. And now I can put an implant in here. I can move it around. I can indicate when I'm too close to the nerve. I can put it in place. I can look at it in both planes. See that I'm in the center of the bone here. In the center of the tooth here. I can go through, go 360 degrees around that implant. Making sure I'm well within the bone. And then I can actually go through and I can do a bone density graph to look at the quality of the bone that's around that implant. So in this case, I'm in the middle of a tooth. So I could be able to show the quality of the bone that's around there. So you can see I'm in the middle of the tooth, but I can see I have good bone around here. And I can see that I can match the contours of the bone here to here. And I can see the quality of bone underneath here as well. Again, moving along over to here, again, just showing you different things that we can go through here. And now we can automatically detect the airway. So we can actually do volumetrics on the airway. So now if you're doing sleep apnea or airway treatments, now you can be able to get volumetrics on the airway. 
be able to assess that. It'll do that endoscopy for you on the side and be able to create a graphical representation of the airway for your documentation as well. And finally, you can also do cephalometrics through the CBCT so that we can be able to go through and be able to do cephalometric analysis through the 3D image. And so here's an example of being able to go through with a 3D image and have cephalometric analysis through there as well. There's a lot of things we can do with CBCT that I think a lot of people don't really realize that you have the ability to do with CBCT. Now, in this case, when we have a CBCT image that's this large, then we get into a conundrum because we have the responsibility uh, when we have an image and a clinician has the responsibility of being able to analyze the image. You have a responsibility for everything that's on that image. So when we have something like that, and I go over to this image over here, that there are certain ways that we can be able to start the examination of that image. So we can go through and we can look at the 3D image because we can understand, we can look from side to side looking for any neoplasms on the 3D picture. We can also look at the coronal and be able to go from nose to tail, looking through, looking for any anomalies since the human skull should be equal bilaterally. We should be able to see if there's any neoplasms. We can see here that there's a little sinus fluid here that we would notice. Otherwise, we won't go through. We're looking for anything that looks like a big change on either side. But at some point, that everything outside the dentition for a dentist is outside your scope of practice. And so that's where uh, a lot of, we get a lot of questions about, about radiologists and having a radiologist read. So that's where we've invited Dr. Kleber Silva to be able to have some discussion about having a radiologist, the value of having a radiologist review your CBCT images and uh, be able to have it to where it, how it protects you in case of being able to read these uh, as you get these done for large uh, CBCT images. Uh, so if you go to YouTube and you type in HDX Will, you'll see the HDX Will Academy. And from there, you'll see my lovely face on a number of different lectures. Uh, we're updating it this year, so there'll be a number more lectures on there as well. Uh, and then I'm usually seen throughout the country in a number of uh, implant courses. Uh, teaching about CBCT, and then I also teach in universities as well uh, to be able to, again, educate people on the technology so they understand more about that. And there'll be some more CE courses on our website as well. Thank you for watching. Follow Dental Discussions podcast and find out more about HDX Will North America by visiting our YouTube and our website. Links are in the description.